Welcome to this video tutorial on how to make wet and damp looking materials as if it is raining or has just rained within your scenes. I'm going to be using the model I've used for the previous videos in this series and we're going to be making a damp sort of tarmac material on this blue plane here. Now currently my scene looks like this and we've got a kind of white material on this plane. So I'm going to begin by just making our basic tarmac material, opening up the asset editor, going to the materials properties, creating a new generic material here and we'll call this tarmac and once that's made I'm going to open up the side panel on the right here and we're going to just add in our tarmac texture into our diffuse map under bitmap and just load in a tarmac texture I'll put a link in the description of where I found this texture um, so that's now imported in there and what we can then do is we're just going to select our ground plane in blue and we'll right click on our tarmac and apply that to the selection. Now for this I've also in my texture mapping I've mapped it at 500 by 500 by 500 millimeters to give it the size and if we have a quick look at the render preview here so now you can see my tarmac texture has been applied to that surface and at the moment it's quite flat quite even and it's obviously a sort of very dry tarmac texture now. Now what we want to do is we want to give the effect that it's just rained in this scene and the tarmac is damp and shiny but in certain areas so it's not going to be kind of fully shiny across the board but we're going to give the illusion of small puddles within this surface. Now to do that I'm just going to start by lowering the brightness of this image. And to do that I'm going to go back to the diffuse map here. I'm going to open up that texture just by clicking back on this blue box. Under parameters and color manipulation we're just going to lower the color gain and what this does is it just darkens the texture a little bit just to make it a bit less bright. So I think somewhere around there should be good for this. Once we've done that I'm going to then apply a reflection map in there to give it some shininess in certain areas. Now we don't just want to sort of ramp the reflection up like this because that would make it shiny across the whole board and it makes it look like the whole thing is flooded or there's water just sitting across the whole surface. We want it to be a bit more random and patchy than this. So to do that, instead of just changing the reflection color here, we're going to insert a map into this and I'm going to click on the small box to the next to the reflection color and we're going to drop in a noise B map. Now noise B has slightly more controls than noise A which is why we're using that. And we're going to throw that in there and as you can see that's now dropped it in. Now at the moment my noise is quite small and it's quite a kind of mellow gradient between the black and the white scale. Now what we'll do is we're going to just up the size of this a bit and we'll have a look at the effect here. And what you'll start to see is that we're going to get sort of patchy areas which are slightly more reflective than others in this scene. Now because we kind of lower this back down so you can see it again. Because the noise at the moment is got quite a smooth gradient we can't really see the difference between the very shiny areas and the not so shiny areas. So in order to sort of change the contrast of this image we're going to play around with the levels here and if you set the low level to around a 4.5, 0.45 and the high level down sort of a 5.5 five. you'll see now that the difference between the white and black areas in the noise is much more pronounced we've got really dark areas and really bright areas what this means in terms of reflection is you're going to have areas which are super reflective as you can see in my image here and areas which aren't at all which make it look dry and this gives the illusion that you've got these kind of small puddles forming on the surface of this material now we can play around with the size of this as well to vary that puddle size but I'm also going to change the type of noise. Now at the moment it's on a regular but if we change it to a fractal it makes it a little bit more random, slightly smaller patches and it makes it just a little bit more like you get puddles when you see puddles on the surface of material if it's rained. So I'm going to go for the fractal noise in this case and we can change the iteration number up there to give it a kind of slightly rougher edge. You can change the size of this if you want slightly bigger puddles too. And all of these will have an effect on the size and sort of distribution 
of your puddles in there. So depending on the kind of type of view you want, how you're looking at it, you might want to play around with those settings here to change that size and iteration value to best suit your scene. Once you've got something you're happy with, and I think for this we're going to go for a, let's go for a sort of 0.8 size there. What we can then do is at the moment we've got our puddles in, they're looking quite good, but the sort of main texture is still quite flat. It would be nice to get a bit of bump in there so we can actually see the surface of the stones and that it's got a slight texture to it. Now obviously when we're using a map like this we don't want the texture to be applied to the areas that are reflecting because that's supposed to be a kind of water material. So if we go to our bump, go to material options and then maps under here, bump and normal mapping, we'll turn it on and under the bump mapping I'm just going to go in and we're going to go to a bitmap and we're going to drop in that same image I've used for my material in the bump map. Now what you see is if I drop this in the bump map has been applied to my whole material so now my puddles are also slightly bumpy they're not as smooth as they once were so it kind of looks like the water is just sort of sitting on the surface of the material but if you still wanted to retain the smoothness in these watered areas but bumpiness on the areas that aren't wet we're going to have to combine the bump and the noise map together now to do that what we can do is we can go back up to our reflection where we put that noise map in this little blue square here tells us that there's a map in there and I can right click and copy that noise map there. I'm now going to scroll down and then right click and I'm going to paste it in my bump map so essentially at the moment my bump map and my reflection map are the same now if we go into that bump map here now color ray tells us that that bit's black and that tells us that there's going to be sort of no reflection in that area so instead of a black what we can do is we can actually put a map into this part as well so essentially we're doing a map within a map here so I'm going to open up that click on bitmap and this time we're going to put that texture into our noise map so what we'll end up with is you'll see we've got a white area and then we've got an area that has our texture in and what this will mean for our material here is what you can see in this sort of Brenda preview is we're getting a bumpy surface on anywhere that's not wet anywhere that hasn't got these puddles but then when you get the puddles they remain completely flat which is what this map is telling us so anywhere that's white is remaining completely flat anywhere that's dark has got our bumpy surface in so essentially we're just combining those two maps together to give us some bump to these kind of to this texture but to keep the flat areas looking like they're a small puddle on the surface. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to create a sort of wet material look in V-Ray for Rhino. This could be used for concrete, sort of any floor material you have, you can combine this technique and use it there. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you want any other tutorials on creating materials and textures in V-Ray and Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.